It's Saturday night Big Ten Volleyball from Lincoln, Nebraska, and the Devaney Center is going to be rocking behind another sellout crowd as BTN Volleyball presented by Tachikara. It's the 16th ranked Wisconsin Badgers meeting number three Nebraska in Lincoln. Take a look at the current standings in the Big Ten Conference. Minnesota all alone atop the standings after a Friday night win here in Lincoln. Penn State and Ohio State, Nebraska all tied at 7-2. Wisconsin is 5-4. Hello, everyone. I am Mike Wolf alongside Kathy Wieskamp. And Kathy, we look at these two teams. Nebraska coming off a very difficult la loss last night to Minnesota. While Wisconsin beat Iowa, however, they're still in trying to recover from two losses of their own to Minnesota a week ago. It's a bounce back night for these two teams. Really, both these teams do need to respond. What they learned about their team and then implement those changes. Nebraska needs to get out, start strong, and push through the end. Wisconsin, they need to play clean, stay mentally focused so that they can play at the level they are capable of playing. And Wisconsin made a few moves last night in the lineup as Romana Krishkova played on the left at the end of that match against Iowa. Gillis, Bates on the outside. Krishkova could be back on the right, though, in this one. Williams and Nelson in the middle. Carlini the setter. And then Taylor Morey is the libero for the Badgers. Take a look at Kelly Sheffield, the third-year head coach for the Wisconsin Badgers, led the Badgers to their first Big Ten title since 2001 last year and, of course, a national championship match appearance in 2013. The Huskers with Katie Rolfson. She'll be on the right side. Fiend as well as Maloney, the DS. Amber Rolfson in the middle. Hall in the middle as well. And Hunter, the setter. Justine wong Arantis, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week, is the libero for the Huskers. John Cook in his 16th season leading this Nebraska program. And it may have been a while, but John Cook was the head coach at Wisconsin back in the mid-'90s. He won a Big Ten title with the Badgers and had six NCAA tournament appearances. First meeting for these two teams this year, the only meeting between these two a year ago. It was Wisconsin who won this matchup in Madison. The last time they met here in this building, it was a five-set win for the Huskers. And then Nebraska leading the all-time series 17-2. Wisconsin has never won in Lincoln, and it is so difficult to come here and play in the Devaney Center with this crowd of over 8,000 on hand, Kathy. It's a great volleyball venue, and Nebraska really feels they have a great advantage bringing teams into this environment, and they like that environment. Season high, 8,500 fans mm -hmm. last night for the match yep. against Minnesota. A four-set loss for the Huskers. Did not close out some sets, but they're going to see if they can get off to a good start here against Wisconsin. Lauren Carlini setting up Tiana Williams for the first kill of the match. Williams coming around. She's so quick on that slide. They pushed her all the way to the pin there, and she sneaks it between the pin and the blockers. It'll be interesting to watch tonight the slide play. Last night, Hannah Tapp from Minnesota went off. 17 kills, hit 500 on the slide, and Wisconsin goes to it right away. Right away, and I'm sure Coach Sheffield noted that as he prepared today. We'll see if Nebraska has an answer. Trouble and serve received for the Huskers, and an easy one for Wisconsin. Tough serving right off the get-go. Um, Wisconsin really being aggressive at the serve. That was part of the game plan. Really feeding up the energy on the Wisconsin Badger side. Madison Duello serving for the Badgers. Has not had that role often this year. Fiend goes off of the touch, and she'll have the point for the Huskers, their first of the match. Be sure to check out our BTN net cam. You can stream our exclusive camera right now on BTN to go and get a unique look at all of the volleyball action. btn to gocom for the BTN net cam. Great way to look at the hands over the net, the blocks, see what goes on right up at the net throughout this match. Monica Albright serving, and she has Wisconsin well out of system. They don't get the ball to Carlini. And with it up, and here's Fecky, her first chance. Bates, and she's stuffed by the Husker block. Nebraska block has been tough this season. That's been an emphasis, the defense on the Nebraska side. But just a strong setup is the key. You can see um, Katie Rolson with the setup and that great push over to seal it. Nebraska leading the Big Ten in blocks per set during conference play. And again, Wisconsin well out of system. They just send over a free ball. Hall with the attack and the point for Nebraska. That's really sad with that tough serve. You know, gave Nebraska a free ball, put them in system, and all hitters were available. Nebraska chose to go that fast tempo. 
Albright, the sophomore out of North Aurora, Illinois, leading this Husker team in aces this year. Right now, doesn't have an ace, but she's done well to keep Wisconsin out of system. Here's Williams, this time the Badgers in system, and they have the point. In system, and that slide again, as you talked about, Mike, coming around the backside. Slide is a hard attack to stop. It can occur anywhere along the net there. You really got to see its contact point and get hands in front of it. Kelly Hunter with the set out. Katie Rolfs in the big swing, and Bates chases that ball into the crowd, but she won't keep it in. I love that pursuit of the ball, never quit attitude. She's going all the way across into the fans and the stands. Got to make sure you protect your body there, girl. Kelly Bates had a bit of a rough night last night against Iowa. Was taken out in the second set, but came back to have some critical swings down the stretch for Wisconsin. Time the slide doesn't go for the Badgers. Carlini back out to Bates. And she's looking for the touch call. She won't have it, the point for the Huskers. And as you mentioned, coming off of a tough night or a challenging night, it'll be interesting to see how she responds. 5-1 run for Nebraska. Kelly Bates was an all Big Ten freshman selection. And with both of these teams, it's about responding to see how they deal mm -hmm. with some of the adversity they've faced in the past few weeks. Nelson again on the slide to the back corner. Katie Nelson, just a nice high contact point, goes for that deep corner. And Nebraska really struggling um, getting a block and, and even touching the balls on the slide. Coach John Cook talked about the way to slow down the slide, serve tough, but sometimes <laughs> you can't do that on every single point. So Huskers need to figure out another way to slow down the slide of Wisconsin. Well, and when you've got Carlini uh, able to set and place that ball, even when it's not a perfect ideal situation, definitely has an advantage. What a get by Taylor Mori. Wisconsin Libero keeping that play alive, and then Katie Rolson, the kick. Justine Wateroptis gets it over, and wow, what a play. This rally continues, but Bates wins the rally for Wisconsin. What a great play, great up. Let's take another look at that. Ball comes up. The big save, and here you can see the response. Kick it up, and then the final kill. The blockers didn't get back in there, and Bates finishes it off big. I think Katie Rolfson was trying to kick that over to Justine Wangarantis. Yeah, keep it alive. Anything, whatever it takes. Off the antenna. Well, you know she wanted to keep it alive. I don't know if she was directing it, though, to her libero. No, but she did great placement, good control. So the attack air on Nebraska, 6-5 start here in set one. Wisconsin leading. There's the freshman Fecky in the block for Wisconsin. Krishkova and Haley Nelson combined. Krishkova's out and uh, really focused on getting a good setup there. Fecky's a power heavy hitter. She's right there. Amber Rolfson tries to go down the line, but that's out of play. We've seen several hitting errors here by Nebraska. A couple wide into the block. And it results in a timeout for the Huskers. They're down here in set one. It's a Wisconsin lead, eight to five. And then the Spartans beating Indiana. That was a game at one point, but Michigan State did run away with it in the end. And a quick set, easy kill for the Huskers. Nice set there by Kelly Hunter, pushing that quick middle. She was a little bit off balance, leaning back, but did a nice job in her placement. Kelly Hunter, the sophomore setter for Nebraska. First year running the offense for this team. She's confident setting middle. She can work the ball around, but it's been a big difference for the Huskers to have better middle options with a setter like Kelly Hunter. Can't get to that ball as Rolfson diving for it. Another point for Wisconsin. Blockers got their hand on the ball, gave Nebraska an opportunity, but just too much. 9-6 lead for Wisconsin. Last night, Nebraska saw separation in sets 2, 3, and 4 against Minnesota. Had to have some comebacks to get it even back in those sets. Carlini out to Gillis. Badgers, though, don't get it over and under four touches. It looked like it was great coverage, but they didn't get it over. Right. Did a nice job covering the attacker, but again, couldn't control it off. Lauren Gillis for Wisconsin led the Badgers with 11 kills and eight digs last night against the Hawkeyes. Fourth consecutive match for her in double figures. 
really coming into her own with Wisconsin after transferring from USC. Overpass, the kill for Fiend. And here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center, there is a video replay, the review system this year. You can see what can be reviewed, three reviews per team, three challenges, and they do not cost either team a timeout, so we will see those throughout the night. It is just Nebraska, Minnesota, and Wisconsin so far in the Big Ten using the replay system. And Gillis with the kill for the Badgers. As you said, Gillis really becoming more comfortable, confident on that outside position, finding ways to get kills, a little tempo shot here. Again, just maturing in the position. Haley Nelson serving. She had four aces last night, just misses the line. <laughs> Nelson is a tough server, and, and they like her in that rotation back there. She really often is able to get some runs and some aces with that serve. Kelly Sheffield said that Nelson would have had four aces against any team in the Big Ten with the way she was serving last night. Here is Sydney Townsend to serve for Nebraska. Krishkova down the line for the point. Big swing there by Krishkova. Squares up, takes that hard down the line right at Townsend as she enters into the match. Romana Krishkova, redshirt junior out of Slovakia. First full year playing with Wisconsin. She transferred before last season, but was in a car accident. She was hit by a car on her bike, had to have knee surgery and missed the entire season, but she rehabbed, got back, and has been great for the Badgers, especially in Big Ten play as of late. Three of the last four matches for her in double figures. Certainly when you see someone who's put in the work like Romana Krishkova, you really appreciate the effort because she had to go through a long rehab. And, uh, and Coach Sheffield said she's been really a key for it. She's been a major difference maker on that right side. A couple of service errors. Two-point lead for Wisconsin. John Cook talked about his team needing to have a consistent effort throughout the entire match. They cannot decide when they want to turn it on and off. There's another great serve, though. Badgers can't get in system. Carlini thought she might have the point, but it's low. Carlini, an aggressive setter. She's, she thinks as an attacker up at the net. I like that that um, attempt just went a hair long. And Nebraska remembers her as an attacker from last year in Madison. She had a career high nine kills in that matchup. And these two teams met a year ago, and Wisconsin swept the four Huskers. Gillis off the block. Gillis, I believe that's her third kill already, second in the match. Just making smart decisions. She's off the net a little bit, just goes out that high hand, comes up with a kill. Clean on the right side, roll shot. Creates the overpass and another kill for the Huskers. Little tempo ball there by Fien, and it resulted in that ball popping right back to the Nebraska side. Nebraska 16 and 3 overall in the year is now Nebraska with Annika Albright back to serve. She did well early on in this first set to keep Wisconsin out of system. Bates goes into the block, sends it back out. Here's a free ball chance for the Huskers. Fecky <laughs> puts it down. The Wisconsin block actually set that ball right up for Fecky. I love the aggressiveness of freshman Fecky. Doesn't hesitate at all, sends it right back. Tough serve, the ace from Anaka Albright. Albright's been tough back at that service line, but her first ace in the match, but she's been creating some issues for the serve receive of the Badgers. She's been challenging them with every serve. First lead for Nebraska since it was 5-4. Hunter pops that ball up. It's Katie Rolson in the Wisconsin block. Bates again. Fecky, the off speed, it'll fall. Hunter tried to push that ball a little bit faster, but it was a little bit lower. Great recognition here by Fecky to take a little bit off. She just had that big power swing, catches the defense on their heels. Carlini going for. 
for her own attack behind her back. And then Fecky off the Wisconsin block. The run continues for Nebraska. You got to give credit there to Wong and Ron. Just great defense. Staying focused on Carlini. 5-0 run for Nebraska, and they're on top in set one. 16-13 lead for Nebraska in set one. Kelly Sheffield wired up for us tonight, talking to Coach John Cook about the replay system before the match. I'll tell you the one thing I'm noticing is I'm calmer. Yeah. I don't know, but you know, we, we were playing at Penn State in the first set. There were three bad calls, two of them against us, one against them. And you're sitting there, it's like, is this how the match is going to be? Yeah. I mean, is this? And if it, it totally, de you know, hey, let's check on that. Oh, I guess my eyes lied. All right, we're all good. Yeah. I like how I feel better with it. Kelly Sheffield talking earlier about the new replay review system, and that'll be part of the NCAA tournament in 2016. So, Kathy, teams might as well get used to it now, and that's why you see a few teams in the Big Ten implementing it. Absolutely, and again, I, it's interesting to see hear his comments and how he feels about it, and, and programs are going to have to prepare their, their uh, venues to be able to do that. You get a chance to see, and Nebraska comes out of that timeout. Big swing from the right side there, Katie Rolfson, keeping that string alive. That's what you want after a timeout, to keep your string running. Eight points now. Make it nine for Nebraska off the serve of Albright. Albright really is making a difference. She's really challenging the serve received um, of Wisconsin, and it's paying off. Oscar Block getting it done, and Nebraska has a five-point lead in the first. Time now for the State Farm State of Success, and it's the weekend of champions here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and that includes the 1995 national champion Cornhusker team led by Terry Pettit as they celebrated the 20-year anniversary of the first Midwest champion in collegiate women's volleyball, and that really was a statement to the rest of the nation that Midwest volleyball can win. It's not just a West Coast sport. Absolutely, and again, it also changed this state. Um, they were just progressing, and at that point, it just made the state then focused on volleyball and look at what we have now, an arena that's housing 8,500 people, and um, it was quite an accomplishment. First of three national titles for the Huskers. Fecky looking for another. Somehow Wisconsin got that over and still in play. Donald with the up. Williams on the slide. Justine Wangarantas another dig. Great defensive play by both sides. Williams again, this time she terminates. As we continue to look back at that 1995 team, beat Texas in the NCAA final in four sets. Certainly, as you said, the start of something special for Nebraska. And it was a very it was very much a team, you know, and the chemistry, it was all about team and, and um, it wasn't about individuals, and I, I think that's what allowed them to have the success that they did. Christy Johnson, you saw there, now the head coach at Iowa State, um, a key part of that, and a lot of Nebraska players, um, high school players on that team, and so it also, again, makes every young lady think, that could be me. An inspiration to his current Husker team, and Fecky, another kill for Michaela Fecky, make it four now for her. Fecky, We've talked before, she doesn't play like a freshman out on the court. She's very confident, she makes strong moves, doesn't hesitate, and really has been able to find some, some really nice shots to be effective. To serve from Justine wong -Arantis. Laney with Nelson behind, coverage from wong -Arantis. Here's Katie Rolfson. Hunter, the back set over to Rolfson again. Albright tries to punch it up, but it will not stay in range for her teammates. Bates and Nelson stayed focused, stayed in there, and were able to get that block up. Both teams really doing a nice job covering their attackers, being able to stay organized. But Wisconsin coming down top. Set not the best connection there for the Huskers. Larson, off the net, Gillis the up. Krishkova well out of play in the attack there for Wisconsin, and now Nebraska five points for taking this first set. 
Krishkova didn't get a real good approach to that ball, so he wasn't able to drive and get on top of it. So when Romana Krishkova struggled a little bit last night against Iowa, she was taken out. Madison Duello put in, the freshman. Still very early in this match to make any changes. A service error for Nebraska. Think about the only losses for Nebraska this year, all to top 10 opponents. Losing to number nine Minnesota last night, on the road to Ohio State and Texas. Nebraska showing that they will be in contention throughout this year. He again off the hands, always composed, making five kills now. And that's the thing, you know, they had her at the beginning of the year on the right side. They've moved her over to the left side. They felt she is making a difference for us over here. We got to get her out there, out of system, in system. She's making great, great plays. She has made a difference on the service line. Mm -hmm. Ten aces last weekend against Northwestern and Illinois. Did not have one last night, but still disruptive. Right. You know, the, an ace is one category, but that disruption and, again, controlling the opposing team is a key part that you don't really see in the stats. Gets Krishkova. Look at how high that ball will fly off of Juan Arantes. A chance for Krishkova. She goes off the block and down for the Badgers. Just consistent driving from Krishkova, pushing it, working different. You saw her hit down the line here. She changes, makes an adjustment, goes hard at the right side of Nebraska. I think that ball was down the line because if it was in the center of the court, it would have gone into the video board. <laughs> it was that it was, high. Just that's the power that's on that ball, the acceleration. Hunter was looking for her own attack, and now it's down to a two-point set. Wisconsin back in it, and that'll result in a timeout for John Cook and the Huskers. Wisconsin coming back down by two in set one. Move you up for the short serve, all right? So you got the two zone serve, you got over there on the five zone, all right? Come on, let's go, let's go. go. Kelly Sheffield talking with his team about the serve receive pattern. Who's going to take which ball? Because it's key, we've seen the tough serving from Nebraska. Yeah, just making some adjustments in their serve receive to try and combat that, that short serve. That short serve can be very disruptive to jam things up, kind of clog it up up front. Number of points coming from Annika Albright from the service line for Nebraska. Nelson again serving for Wisconsin. We talked about how good she was last night. Down the line, Amber Rolfson with the side out. Amber was a right side player last year, so she's very comfortable on that right side. And she, she just drills it down the line. A lot of movement in the lineup this year for Nebraska from a season ago. Katie Rolfson over the right side, Amber in the middle, as you said before. Fecky moving from the right to the left. It has paid off as John Cook feels like he has his best lineup out there now. Gillis splitting the block. Gillis is really out and played strong on the outside, driving through the ball, gets off here, has a nice strong attack. You got to credit Carlini. Everybody knew that's where the ball had to go. Blockers are there, but Gillis finds a way. Jesse Fien the swing, Maury the up. Gillis again for the Badgers. She goes off the high hands. Four kills for her. She's hitting over 400. So right now, she's doing exactly what Coach Sheffield wants from an outside. And this is what the Wisconsin staff expected from her when she transferred from USC. Now, Badgers trying to tie this first set up. The block is there, but it's off the block to kill for Fee. Fiend using the block. She knew she had a big blocker there. If you can't go through them, then you take advantage of them and use them and tool off them. Kelsey Fiend with a big night last night. Tied a career high 19 kills against Minnesota. Hit 386. She hit six kills and set one alone. Looks again for the Badgers. Trying to work off the block. Fiend into the tape. Here's Bates flying out of the back row. Hunter, the back set. Katie Rolfson, the off speed will fall. Great read there by Katie Rolfson. Defenders were off. She had that short little shot. It's not always about power. A lot of times, finesse will get it done for you. Set point for Nebraska. 
Kathy, we came into this match talking about the defense. Justine Long around this 10 digs in set one. <laughs> She's on par, on track here for a great night, the way it looks. Long around this, the junior libero out of California for the Huskers, two time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. And the National Player of the Week at one point this season. Mm -hmm. Second set point opportunity for Nebraska. And Wisconsin yeah. couldn't get it up. It's the point for Nebraska, and green they win card. the first set. Nope, actually, Coach Sheffield pulls out the green card on that. The challenge review system, first of potentially three that we could see from Kelly Sheffield. As the official will go over to the monitor and take a look. See whether or not that ball did come down. That well, angle, kind of kind of tough, but looked like the ball might have hit the floor yeah. first before the pancake. It looks like it's maybe just off to the side of the hand. It's hard to see on that shot, kind of blocked. You need the other side to see. <laughs> you know, if you look, the fingertips yeah. might just get under that ball. The thing about it, it has to be conclusive for it to make a change in the call. And I don't know if we, well, there, that wasn't a bad. Tough thing from that angle is you uh, can't tell whether or not. Floor there, it looks a little, yeah. uh, floor and the hand's not underneath. From that angle, it does appear that it did hit the floor yeah. first, so this should be Nebraska's set. And the official agrees that will do it. The point for Nebraska, they win set one, but why not get it right, check right. it out, and the replay proved that it was the correct call. Set one goes to Nebraska. They win it 25-22. They're on top of Wisconsin in the Devaney Center. Kathy, we saw the review at the end of the first set. Kelly Sheffield deciding he wanted another look. It didn't go for him, but as you said, why not use it? Yeah, why not use it? I mean, it could only give his team another chance. And as he mentioned, when we had him wired, he talked about, again, I feel much more comfortable. And the key is we got it right. And that's what both coaches, both programs want. It does not cost the team a timeout if it's wrong. And Cecilia Hall with the quick kill. Good start for Nebraska coming out with that quick transition right out um, um, to start the set. We talked about that goal at the beginning. That's key for them is getting a quick start. They've struggled a little bit with that this season. Williams sticking with it for the Badgers, and it finally falls on Nebraska's side of the net. Williams is a tough blocker up there. She's uh, averaging about 1.3 blocks per set. She's very disciplined, as you said, stayed tight and finished it. Coming off tying a season high of seven blocks last night against Iowa for Tiana Williams. Back in there, here's the block again for the Badgers. Works real hard. I like how she moves. She's very smooth to get out there, close. And look at that solid reach over penetration, stopping the ball. 91 blocks on the season for Tiana Williams, third in the Big Ten Conference. She was looking for another, but that time Katie Rolfson tools the block. Just kind of goes hard at that seam, that weak part of the block. An advantage in Nebraska. Katie Rolfson, six kills. A couple of digs, a couple of blocks so far in this match. She's been a player that's really played very complete all season long. She's had several double doubles. Her defense has been strong, and, and she's been a key in the offense production as well. And, and as we talked about, she played on the left side last year and now <laughs> moved again. That talks about you know her athleticism and, and the quality of player that she is when you can make those changes. Rolfson on the right side. No, it's Katie Maybe. Rolfson on the right as they, they get the kill as they move around the two of them. And that actually is kill number 1,000 of the career for Katie Rolfson. That's a big milestone for Katie. And she's only a junior. We're still only midway through this season. So um, that number won't stay for long, I'm sure. But congratulations to her on that milestone. in the back row with the up for Wisconsin. Here's Bates. Fecky 
again, but the one-handed block by Nelson just got a hand on it. Again, never quit on it up there at that block. Like you said, that one hand may be the one that's in the right location. Fecky, tough ball coming over her shoulder from behind. Can't really see what she's got in front of her. Blockers were there. Address run off the net. Bump set over to Fecky. Carlini back to Bates. The tip from Bates will pin ball around and finally go down for a kill from Wisconsin. Nebraska talking a little bit in that huddle after that, communicating, trusting, not reaching behind, letting your team um, make that play. Laney had to get to that open space in the floor. Krushkova, Longarant is a great up. Yep, great up. Tip from Krishkova will sit on the net and then fall. Wasn't pretty. It doesn't have to be pretty to count. But, uh, not a great ball, but that's what good hitters do. They better the ball. Last night, Minnesota challenged Nebraska by tipping, and they struggled at making that adjustment. And we're seeing some of that here from Wisconsin as well. Another dig for Long around. And Albright comes out of the back row, but it's the stuff for Haley Nelson. Haley Nelson was there waiting. She does a nice job delaying as that 10-foot attack and comes up big. Third block of the second set so far for Wisconsin. They're on top. And the Scarlet Knights will try to challenge when they have a matchup with Nebraska. Katie Rolson again making eight kills now in this match. Katie just really is strong, aggressive attacker at the net. She she um, very athletic, jumps well, gets up and, and goes after the ball. So both Amber Rolfson and Katie Rolfson hitting on that right side. Both very versatile attackers. And Nelson, kind of a non-traditional middle attack, but she gets the point. And that's the thing with Carlini. I mean, she's able to put, get her hitters, and, and as hitters, you, you got to be ready. She's going to give it to you. And, and that's really why she's so deceptive. Opponents struggle with her because they can't leave thinking, oh, yeah, it's got to go out here. Fiend off the blocking deck. Fiend been a little bit quiet here. That's her fourth um, kill in the match, but no error. So she's um, being very strong and consistent when she gets the opportunity hitting 333 right now. John Cook has talked about how Kelsey Fien is capable of taking over matches. Certainly saw that ability last night with her 19 kills. And again, trying to go cross court, but it's wide. Fien didn't really get a good approach. The ball was out there trying to hit around the box, make a shot, just misses her mark going a little bit wide. And of course, just right after <laughs> you teed her up with a um, perfect hitting percentage up to this point. Nelson back serving again for Wisconsin. Another chance for Fien off the block and into the antenna. Williams hands on it, but it, um, her hands weren't sealed and pushed to that middle and it, it angled off toward the antenna. 9-6 lead for Wisconsin in set two. Set one was a Nebraska 25-22 win. Service there, though, from Kelly Hunter. And Kathy, we talked to Coach Cook. He mentioned how important it was to serve tough. What's the assessment so far from what you've seen? Albright's done well, yeah. but the rest of the team, maybe gonna, not so much. I was going to say, Albright's stepped in and, and taking that lead in regard to that. But we've seen some errors, and um, really, the other players, we haven't seen that effectiveness that he, I know he was hoping for. Oh, running in to Cecilia Hall. Rolfson hard down to the floor. Here's Katie Rolfson is OK, though. Running that cross pattern. You see Hall there and um, really led. <laughs> um, Rolfson comes up on top of her. Grown from the crowd as they saw how hard oh. Katie Rolfson fell, but and Hall worse to, for the wear. Yeah. Maury somehow kept that off the floor. We've seen some great defensive plays. Williams again. <laughs> Tiana Williams, four kills now for her. So good on the slide tonight. Let's look at that again. Look how quick she is. She pops up that fast arm swing, comes back. She's very smooth, very effective on that slide shot. A 
make a sub out as Alicia Ostrander will come in for the Huskers. Ostrander, a prominent member of the left side crew last year for Nebraska, but hasn't played quite as much this season. Fecky off the block. Back to Ostrander, they've used her as kind of a changeup. They brought her in at different times, and she's totally comfortable coming in multiple positions and trying to create some action, and she's really made an impact um, consistently. I think here they're looking at Hall after that collision, and that's probably why that change was made there, more so than the momentum. No chance for Williams this time. She tips, and the Huskers can't keep it in play. Oh, Williams, you talked about how quick she is. Kelly Sheffield feels like she's the quickest middle he's seen at Wisconsin. Another look at that last collision. And, you, and we were concerned about Katie Ralston, but um, Cecilia Hall was at the bottom of that collision, and I think they're kind of looking at her knee a little bit, kind of landed hard on that. And again, not anticipating that weight and everything coming down on top of her. Kind of hard to tell how much of the impact there in the slow motion, but clearly in some pain and getting checked out on the bench. So I hope to see Cecilia Hall back in as the match goes on. Nelson behind Carlini. Handcake in the back row from Albright. Here's Kelly Bates through the block and down. Bates, but you, you also got to credit Nelson. She's running around on that slide behind the slide has been really effective and, and has really opened up the outside there for Bates. Nelson read the attack there from Hunter. Kelly Nelson with a good job at the net blocking tonight. Nice series across the front here by Nelson. Hunter, tight ball, trying to make a strong play, but Nelson was not fooled at all. It's Fecky with the power. Better ball there for Fecky. Um, she's been getting balls tonight a little bit low, so she hasn't been able to drive. When you give um, Fecky a ball that's high that she can go up after and drive at. She's got a lot of power. She heads back to serve. John Cook has said that Fecky has one of the hardest swings he's ever seen at Nebraska. And it has paid off this season. Shkova swinging from the left. And Hunter got to that ball, kept it in play. Rally continues. Another chance for Krishkova, cross court and it's down. Krishkova one-on-one -on -one there. You saw Amber Rolfson didn't get to the outside. One-on-one -on -one is going to be tough. Great play there by Hunter. She stayed within the zone to make that play. But Nebraska couldn't get reorganized. Fiend with the big swing was looking for a touch, but too high. Wisconsin now with the six-point lead. You think back to last night when Nebraska put together runs. They were down 16 to 11 and went on a 7 to 1 run in set two against Minnesota. So they're capable of coming back here in this set. And Gillis the kill. Gillis again continues on that outside. Is that her fifth kill? I mean, a strong performance. 5-1 run for Wisconsin. And Gillis as well as Tiana Williams, two players leading the way for Kelly Sheffield. And we'll get a listen in as Kelly Sheffield wired up for us earlier in a timeout of the match. She's serving on the whistle, and you notice that's given them a lot of problems here because the setter is still making their call here. So that's given us, that's given us some advantage, right? Uh, this middle is running quick and back behind, so you're being vocal with your, uh, with your calls here, all right? Let's go. Defense. Defense. Year three for Kelly Sheffield leading this Wisconsin Badger program. It was interesting talking to him this week. He's certainly someone who loves to motivate his team. And it kind of is passed down to the next generation. His daughter, Lexi, was in the car with him one time and said, Daddy, I'm allergic to nuts. Are you allergic to players who don't compete? <laughs> and he said, yes. Yes, I am allergic <laughs> coaches, to players who don't compete. And you can tell how much he puts into his program that his whole family is on board with this Wisconsin program. And I think the, his daughters are at practice and his daughters are making signs and, and encouragement, you know, <laughs> notes for the kids. So it is a family, uh, you know, commitment in this position, that's for sure. 
Uh, it's been the case for Nebraska as well. You think back to Coach John Cook's daughter, Lauren Cook, was the yep. setter for the Huskers, and it is a sport that really brings in a lot of families. It's a lot of history. You can see through different programs over the years as players come back and follow in the legacy of their family members. Well, and again, being a coach's kid, you hear and learn so much just by the conversations at the dinner table or <laughs> on the car rides or whatever. And so often those players have such high IQs when they get to, you know, uh, because they're listening and learning at all times. 17 to 10 lead for Wisconsin over Nebraska. Let's see if Nebraska is capable of another runner. Will Wisconsin put this one away and even up this match at one set apiece? And the Huskers get one back with Amber Rolfson. Right out of the timeout, um, Nebraska draws something up and is able to get um, a quick side out. Three different times last night, Nebraska came back from large deficits to get close. However, they only closed out one of those sets. So a lot of work to be done. Tough serve in Wisconsin again. Somehow getting it over. Ostrander and Badgers can't recover the kill for Alicia Ostrander. Just a tough serve, and we talked about Nebraska has said we needed more people than Albright doing that. In comes Sydney Townsend, gives them a tough one, but uh, Wisconsin kept it alive, but Nebraska gets the edge with the free ball. Gillis with no blocker up, and that's going to be easy. <laughs> yep, you got to love that when you see that. But, but that lends to Carlini's deception. I mean, you're thinking she can't set that ball or she's for <laughs> sure going here and, and nope, she can. She's so good about locating her sets and giving attackers hittable balls. Fiend has that ball sent back. Another block for the Badgers, make it number seven in the match. And Wisconsin is really challenging with that block. As you said, seven in the match already. The hitters from Nebraska trying to find a way to work around that block. There's Ostrander, and she'll put it down in place of Cecilia Hall. Ostrander with a couple kills. As we've talked about, she's kind of been that inspiration, that impact player, and, and has been called to duty many times. And she always comes in, and, it, and she isn't waiting for that chance. She's ready when the chance comes. Nebraska fans will see a lot more of Alicia Ostrander. She'll be playing for the women's basketball team as well this year. Ready there for the Huskers. Gillis again off the block of Rolfson. And Lauren Gillis right now having herself a night. She is definitely stepping up to the challenge tonight. She's hitting 455 right now. Excuse me, 462, seven kills. That's what you want your outsides to do. She's also double figures and digs as well, so. Getting close to a double-double already. Not only set two. Back to Gillis for another. That one's out of play. So attack air, and Nebraska still down by six, though, in this second set. Talked about Lauren Gillis coming over from USC, transferring. She just wasn't happy with this system with the Trojans. Obviously, USC having such a great year yeah. this year, but Gillis feels much more comfortable in the system under Kelly Sheffield. She's playing with some other players that she knew from the Munciana Club in Indiana, and Taylor Morey and Tiana Williams. And, and again, those are people, too, that, that again, she's comfortable with, and if it's a system that better fits her, you know, you can be a great player and a great outside or whatever, but you have to fit the system, too. And so um, it's been a good change for her as well as for Coach Sheffield to add her to their lineup. 3.73 kills per set in the last four matches for Lauren Gillis. Double figures, each of them led the team in kills three times during that span. She takes a rest, but there's Fecky going off the block and down for the Huskers. As we talked about, we're seeing different types of attackers from Nebraska on the outside. Fecky's a power angle shot hitter. And then you've got Fiend, she's more of a tempo location type hitter. Really, you gotta be paying attention as a blocker what you got in front of you. And, and respond accordingly. Carlini takes 
takes her own attack. She's so dangerous up there on the dump. And she's so quick. You know, she goes up and she waits till the very last second, and then it is very aggressive and fast. Lauren Carlini, 53 kills on the season coming into this match. She had a career high nine against the Huskers last year. Carlini trying to get over that one and out of play is Amber Rolfson long on that attack. Amber didn't get in a good approach. She was tight a little bit and couldn't get on top of the ball. Wisconsin, two points from taking this second set. Wilson, the Aussie. Good coverage from Long Arantes. Here's Rolfson looking for the back corner. She got it, and the point for Katie Rolfson. Great decision there, knowing what the defense of Wisconsin was. They rotated up that deep corner wide open and just takes a placement of the ball. Nelson the swing and it ping pongs around off the block and another kill for Haley Nelson. Set point for the Badgers. Quick around that backside is low flat and then blockers weren't able to seal it up. Good swing for Nelson. Go! Fecky the big swing keeps the Huskers alive. There's that power that Coach Cook talks about. But a great ball for her to drive to. And that makes a difference. She needs that kind of a ball, and then she can unleash on you. And we'll see if she can maybe go on a serving run. We mentioned the five aces she had against Northwestern and Illinois. However, that'll be an air that'll do it for the second set. Wisconsin wins it 25 to 17. We are all tied up at one set apiece. Another top 20 battle in the Big Ten Conference, Nebraska. Solid in the first set, but struggled in set two as they fall 25 to 17. Back with the start of set three between Nebraska and Wisconsin. Michael alongside Kathy Wieskamp. And Kathy, one of the things when we talked to both of these coaches, they said winning time, coming through at the critical moments was something they had not done well. And we saw a different finish in each of the first two sets. One team, Nebraska, came through at the end of the first set, and Wisconsin at the end of the second. And, and that's the thing. It, they know they have those capabilities. It's just pushing through and being consistent in your play. And both of them, you, you, you kind of look at Wisconsin, and they've got some young players out on the court, new faces out there on the court after some graduation. And so you, you expect that, but again, that's not what we want. <laughs> and, you know, and Nebraska, that's just kind of been a nemesis. They just really haven't pushed and pushed consistently to that final phase. And they've had ups and downs. And, Trying to flatten that out and be consistent across the board um, is really what, and it drives coaches crazy. 60% <laughs> of Wisconsin's roster is new this year. Nebraska, on the other hand, a more mature team than they were a season ago when they were the youngest team in the history of Nebraska volleyball. But as you mentioned earlier, too, a lot of people in new positions this year, too. So, so working through those. But um, we'll we are see what happens. Interesting to see how things develop over the course of the year. We are at the midpoint after this match. We will be at the midpoint of the Big Ten season. So 10 matches to play after this one. And more time to work things for both teams. As Ostrander goes off Williams for the kill. And we see Cecilia Hall is back in the lineup here as we come out of the break. So just want to keep an eye on her. I see that they've got some, some, a sleeve or something on that knee. But she is back in the lineup. Monica Albright serving again for the Huskers. Nebraska school consistently off her serve in the first two sets, and Gillis continuing to get it done. She's just having her night. I mean, she she is doing um, what any coach wants from the outside. She's, see, she's making good adjustments. She see, keeps that hand high, gives takes that line shot. I'm feeling good about it. Hunter sets Fecky. Punched back up by Nebraska and Albright out of the back row. Bates. Can Fecky end the rally? No, she'll have to put it over. Almost was a point even though yes. she didn't take a swing. This is a big rally. Both teams doing a great job covering. Rawson trying to end it. Maury the up. Bates tries and she does end it. Big swing there by Bates, takes that hard line shot. 
just a great defensive play. We've just seen both teams tonight pursuing, laying their bodies out. Nice exclamation point there for Bates. Emma McDonald with that great get for Wisconsin. Long Arantes can't dig it up. It'll be a block for the Badgers. That block really became significant in set number two and, and challenged Nebraska. Um, Nebraska's hitting percentage very low and impacted by that 10 errors. Now make that 11. Service there though for Duello, but that last block, the seventh block for Wisconsin in the last two sets. Now obviously very early here in set number three, but still yep. big number for barely into two sets. Mentioned Wisconsin third in the Big Ten in blocks per set this season, 2.76. Nebraska is fourth overall, but in conference play, the Huskers do lead the Big Ten in blocks. Kelly Bates getting going now for Wisconsin. Bates has one on one. Nebraska only uh, Amber Rawlson doesn't go out, leaves sister Katie to handle Bates on her own. It's a bit of a surprise. Amber Rawlson leading the Big Ten in blocks per set. Here is Amber Rawlson on the attack. Bates well off the net into the tape. Great. Just continuing to impress. And Rick Donald this time, though. <laughs> that was very similar to the last one, yes. but she couldn't get it up. That's right. And that just uh, that sharp cut shot, that angle. As a defensive player, you got to get a little backspin, pop that up. Just couldn't quite get under it. For Bates, make it number six now. Be sure to check out the BTN net cam streaming right now on BTN to go. Get a different look at all the volleyball action from the BTN net cam. Wisconsin off to a 6-3 start in set number three. Annika Albright the kill from the back row. She shows her versatility. She, they like using her as an additional attacker from the back row. She does a nice job coming down that middle and then working the angles of the court. Um, there she didn't get a great approach, but still made a great shot. And for those of you wondering, a year ago it was Annika Albrecht because Annika Albrecht was too polite to correct anyone. And we're like, like the pronunciation came out, like, what, is this right? And she said, well, I just didn't want to say anything. <laughs> so we went a year calling her by an incorrect Albrecht. So it is Albrecht. Kelly Bates, though, now with her eighth kill for Wisconsin. Great start to this third set for Bates, and she'll serve for the Badgers. And she's just come out with a lot more intensity, it seems like. She came out a little bit sluggish early, but wow, she kicked it up a notch. Katie Ralston behind the 10 foot line. That's the dig for Moore. Akrishkova, Loney the up for the Huskers. Ostrander, but that one out of play. And Wisconsin just continues to challenge Nebraska defense. They making them make plays and, and and balls are getting popped up, but maybe not into that perfect spot, giving an edge to the blockers of Wisconsin. The Vandy Center crowd trying to will on Nebraska. Ostrander puts that one straight down for the kill. And the Ostrander, a crowd favorite, she's a Nebraska girl, came in and has really just continued to, to grow and develop and um, been an inspiration. A lot of different matches has come in and made an impact. That's what you want. Ostrander was in double figures and kills nine times last year. There's another chance for that one into the bottom of the net. Those are the kind of errors you really want back. Didn't even give yourself a chance as that one was in to the net. Tough serve from Nelson. Bates lying on the floor, able to get that. But then to the back corner for the point. Nebraska gets it. Great decision by Kelly Hunter. Everything, everything was kind of out of control. She sent it over quick to the deep corner. Kelly Hunter in Big Ten play, leading the conference in assists per set. Had a great defensive effort last night with her 17 digs. Williams, <laughs> look at the power into the floor. Power and quickness, but also such a high contact point. She's going right over the top. And just that tempo. Blockers don't have a chance with that speed and that high contact. 
Keanu Williams now six kills and ten airless swings for Wisconsin. Stringer on the right into Wisconsin block and out of play to kill Brostrand. So Ostrander has come in for Fiend and, and made it made a difference. We've seen just kind of some inconsistencies up and down, but she's really finding a way to get some kills and points for Nebraska. Gillis once more, Albright the up. Williams again, Tiana Williams. She's just so athletic. Quick, that's the, the trouble. I mean, when you've got speed and quickness, it's hard. The blockers know Fecky was over there. But on that slide, too, it's hard because the contact point, you never know where they're going to make that touch. What a difference from early in the season for Tiana Williams, her connection <laughs> with Lauren Carlini as Katie Rolfson has another kill. There was a meeting before Big Ten play between Coach Sheffield, Lauren Carlini, and Tiana Williams. They all sat down, looked at film, and Coach Sheffield said, see, don't give up on your routes. Carlini can set it from anywhere, and it's been the change. And it's made a difference, and as a player then, too, you know you go hard every time, and then you're in a great position to, to make that strong play on the ball. And you're right, as a freshman, she's doing a phenomenal job, but she just needed to move to that next level. And she's moving for a freshman to come into the Devaney Center and not be intimidated at all. Kelly Bates getting it done for Wisconsin. Four-point lead now for the Badgers in the third. Much more polished effort from Wisconsin tonight than the match against Iowa last night. Badgers did win in straight sets, but it wasn't pretty. This one much prettier so far. The Huskers get one more back. That wasn't real pretty, but effectively, and, and we talked about Amber Rolson trying to become a more involved um, part of Nebraska's offense as a middle attacker. Katie Rolson goes after McDonald in the service. Carlini, the one-handed up to keep that alive. And then Amber Rolson, McDonald the dig, actually came over, so just be a continuation, but Fecky will finish the round. Great job for Nebraska to stay organized. There's a little kind of confusion in the back row as that ball popped over between Albright and um, Wong Arantes. But they come through, and again, it's about bettering the ball, taking the ball you get, making something better with it. Ten kills now for Fecky, her 11th in double figures this year. Carlini back out to Bates, and she powers it through the Husker block. Bates really has turned it up a notch here about midway through this match. Um, you talked about last night maybe a little struggle in, in her, her play. She's come out now and seems to be have worked through that. That's about making the adjustment. Ten kills now for Bates. Net violation that goes against Wisconsin. Nebraska drawing close with the Badgers trying to come back here in the third set. Oh, yep. Bates being aggressive there. We talked about it again. She's just playing strong and aggressive here. She gets a little overzealous at the net. Smith Becky can do on the service going after Taylor Morey. Morey, though, puts the pass on target. Oh, what and up from Wong Arantes. Nelson in the middle. Oh, the long rally between these two. And the block for Nebraska. And the block is the difference in that rally there. Three blocks coming on the outside. Um, Kelly Hunter involved in that. You can see Krishkova on the outside here. They've split their hit, their attackers and, and put them in a little different location. We saw Bates there earlier. They put Krishkova over there. Out of play on the air from Krishkova, and we're tied at 13 in the third. That's what a big block does. It makes your attackers make some adjustments, change, not get in their rhythm or make it, change their swing to try and figure it out. Looking to go on a run on the serve from Fecky. Hasn't had Wisconsin out of system, but as we talked about, the block been very good for Nebraska. A 
Ostrander. There's the stuff, though, for the Badgers. Nelson and Bates get a block of their own to slow Nebraska down. Haley Nelson coming through with another block. Make it five now for her. Nelson, a more complete player as a junior for Wisconsin. Hunter looking for her own attack, but several Badgers there waiting. Rolfson into the Badger block. Second chance for Amber Rolfson, she tools. Give it back to me, she says, and she makes an adjustment, changes her swing. She went hard cross court. This time she uses the blocker's hands and tools it off of them. Six kill for Amber Rolfson. Huskers currently being led by Katie Rolfson with 12 and Fecky with 10. A lot of balance for both teams. We've really seen great distribution from both of these setters. Absolutely. They've really put their hitters in positions to be effective with that distribution. Statistically, the two top setters in the Big Ten Conference, Carlini and Hunter. Pushkova, third chance. That's the charm for Wisconsin. She said, I like it on this right side. Give me the ball. And she drives hard at it. Got a tight third set between Wisconsin and Nebraska. We'll come back with more from the Devaney Center. Third set here in Lincoln, Nebraska, between the Huskers and the Badgers. Wisconsin has had the lead throughout the majority of this third set, but is now only a one-point deficit for Nebraska at 15-14. Matches all even at one set apiece. Winner of this one will be in the driver's seat. We got us a great match here. Haley Nelson serving for the Badgers. Hunter with the long run, Ostrander the swing. Another dig from Justine Wong Arantes. It's been happening all night. There's the stuff, though. Williams and Krishkova combined for the Badgers. Krishkova has really set up a strong block here, working hard on that right side. Look at the two top setters in the Big Ten Conference statistically. Of course, Lauren Carlini, the Big Ten Player of the Year and Setter of the Year a season ago. As there's an air by the Huskers. I think right now, the votes from across the country, they'd say Lauren Carlini is the top setter in the Big Ten Conference, but certainly in her first year, Kelly Hunter has done a great job for this Nebraska team. She's done a great job, stepped in, and really worked hard at that position and learning where her hitters needed and, and becoming, and Coach really wants her to become more what he calls a gunslinger. <laughs> a little bit more rest, reckless and, and risky. She has the ability to do that, keep opponents off balance. I would say that's what Carlini is so good at. Let's listen in to Coach Sheffield in that last time out with the Badgers. I want you showing the line and then jumping in and taking this cross cross court, okay? Uh, who's front row right now? You? You? Okay. She's going in there for the B. The middle's going with the B. You got to go in front the B. If they're going to go B, the center front row, then you got to. I want you going over there and getting in front. Of that. All right. Here we go. Push! All right, Kathy, a lot of coach speak in there. <laughs> Break that down for us. What was Sheffield or was it that just kind of something on their game plan? It's it part of their game plan, and it's talking about blocking and again, committing. We're going to show them the line, you know, or give them line and, and then take that cross court. They've got nine blocks. They're actually out blocking Nebraska in this match, and so they're making adjustments, trying to keep the opponent off balance and, and not be able to see that block until the last second, and it's paying off for them. Tiana Williams with five blocks. Haley Nelson with five blocks. Carlini has four as well. Nelson, six yeah. in the Big Ten in blocks per set this year. Tiana Williams, third in the conference. This is a good blocking Wisconsin team. Statistically, maybe not as good as Nebraska, but tonight outdoing the Huskers. Right, and and part of it is getting some of these strategic you know, things he's giving to his teammates or his team in those timeouts, and it's paying off. All off the back set from Hunter. Here's Gillis off the block. Knew that was going out and just watched it go wide of the line. Gillis is doing a nice job. She's keeping that hand high and she's working it down the line. Her shoulders show cross court, but she's staying high and hitting that outside hand. Two on the block. 4-0 run for Wisconsin. Ostrander the tip. Carlini lays out. And then a second chance point for Nebraska. 
Bellini, just that never quick, that, that intense, that drive, that go at all times. She never hesitates. You see just a great up, and look at her, how quick she is back to her feet. Unfortunately, Wisconsin isn't able as, West, as um, Ostrander pushes it deep. Six kills now for Alicia Ostrander coming off the bench. Big contribution for Nebraska. And looking to go cross court, but she doesn't get it over. Tough ball there a little bit. It wasn't quite high enough. Katie didn't get a good enough approach. It was a little late on that. 19-15 lead for Wisconsin in the third set. Badgers took the second. They'll try to go up 2-1 on the road. The stranger from the right baits the up. Gillis again. There's the block, though, for Cecilia Hall. Cecilia Hall doing a great job staying patient, keeping those hands up. Um, that little off speed sends it right back. Hall coming off a season high 11 blocks last night against Minnesota. Richard Sr. out of Sweden. Albright again serving for Nebraska. And then Carlini, her own attack. You know, Nebraska's serving that one position because Carlini's coming from the left front, making her take it from behind, get turned, and, and try and take. Carlini says, all right, <laughs> I'll be aggressive, I'll attack. She's so quick, that's the thing. She's just hard to stop because she's so quick. Third kill now of the match for Carlini. Duello into the net. Interesting decision for Kelly Sheffield, bringing in the freshman in Madison Duello to serve, number nine recruit in the country, playing in this tough environment. Yeah. So far been pretty good, but that last error could be costly. Right, at this point in the mat, in, the, in this set, really critical. Oh, with a long run. Bates just kind of forced that over. And then a mistake by the Huskers, likely tapping it over and it's out of play. We look at hitting errors between the two teams. Nebraska with 24 attack errors to 10 by Wisconsin. I mean, 25 that with this last one. I mean, you just can't win matches with that many errors. Lacking the consistency that Coach Cook talked about. And another one, add to the total. That's nine in this set. There were 10 in the last set. And that's why Nebraska's behind, and that'll result in another timeout. It just, you know, and part of that is this last set a little bit low. You know, I mean, just a combination of different things, but you've got to find a way. You've got to better a ball, keep it in play at least. Now the Wisconsin Badgers have a 5-4 and four record in the Big Ten Conference, but they have been playing some of the most difficult teams in the Big Ten early in the season on September 30th in Madison. The Badgers were coming off three consecutive losses, losing to Penn State and Ohio State on the road, and then they lost to Arkansas out of conference play. It was the longest losing streak under Kelly Sheffield, but they won in four against Illinois when the Illini were in the top ten. And Wisconsin, 3-3 three and three record on the road in Big Ten play this season. They were 10-0 last year. We talked about the changes they've had. There's so much turnover, losing a large senior class from last year. Seven seniors were regular contributors for the Badgers. And the timing, the connection between Moore and Carlini and our hitters, that is what has taken time. But we are seeing a very good communication and connection tonight. Absolutely, and Carlini, because she's so strong, she actually elevates those players' a level of play, too, because she gets them the ball hittable. But they've got to learn to uh, make smart decisions and learn to be going every time and know that Carlini could set me. All those things take time, and you said those connections, too. You need to find where they like it the best, and, and, and so it just is a process, but we're seeing a very smooth system tonight with her attackers. Coach Sheffield has said this team has not gotten down about the losses in Big Ten play with the four losses they have. They feel like they're getting better. And mm -hmm. he had a conversation with Lauren Carlini after the loss to Minnesota and he said that the team is not there yet. And Lauren Carlini and Helly Nelson both said, oh, we can't stand that word yet. They just want to have success right now. And he said to Lauren Carlini that, you know, you think look at the best setters in the world and you say that you're not there yet. You want to be like them and you use yet all the time. You live it. <laughs> and now this team is kind of maybe getting to that point where they're reaching the level that Kelly Sheffield wants. And that's because they focused it on that instead of, you know, the, the issues that they have or the challenge that they have. 
they've continued to focus on we're getting better. If they just get caught up in all the other things, they're not going to make that same progress. Alini again looking for her own attack. Bates with a great dig off the swing from Fecky. Then she takes her own attack and has the kill. <laughs> Kelly Bates, defense and offense. Hey, you got to love it. Do a complete player doing it all today. Here, let's take a look at that again. A big swing. She's been really driving hard down that line, seen some success there, and she says, I'm going to keep doing that until somebody stops me. Now, there was a 9-3 run before that service there for Wisconsin. The Badgers are still two points away from taking this third set and going up 2-1 on the Cornhuskers. And really being in the driver's seat, this is a critical set right here. Does Nebraska have a run left in them in the third? Another dig for Juan Arantes. Fecky into the Wisconsin block. It'll be set point for the Badgers. Fecky trapped in there. That block was inside. It was low. The blockers were there and over the top of her. Tough ball. Not, not anything really she could do with it. 11 blocks for Wisconsin. Lauren Carlini trying to give the Badgers the 2-1 lead. Fecky again. but that'll come back down on Wisconsin's side. So Nebraska not out of the third yet. Chance to fight off another match point here. Becky's been doing some nice things from that service line. We'll see if they can get a run here. She hasn't had an extensive run tonight. Mm -hmm. Certainly capable. Good pass from Bates, and she ends the third, gets it done in serve, receive, and the finish. Why not? She's had a great third set. Perfect way to end it for her. Wisconsin up 2-1 and trying to win their first match in Lincoln all time. We'll be back for the fourth. Start of the fourth set. Wisconsin, the two sets to one lead over Nebraska. The Badgers hoping to get a win over the number three team in the nation, but the Husker fans on their feet and trying to get a little bit of momentum for this Nebraska team. Trying to get some energy, and, and Nebraska's just been, as you asked Coach Cook, inconsistent. How do we get that fixed? You know, it, is what he keeps saying. How do we do this, ladies? And so um, right now, we'll see what he said in the timeout to see if he got his team able to go right now. Wisconsin looks great. They're, they're playing very smooth under the hand of Carly. Wisconsin trying to do something they have never done, which is win a match in Lincoln. This is the ninth meeting between these two teams here. And Nebraska has lost, has won all eight of those. Wisconsin has not had a victory. They're up here as we start the fourth. Getting the swing from the middle. Here's Gillis, and it's out of play. An attack air to start the fourth. I also see Nebraska's lineup. They've got Kelsey Fien back in, Ostrander. And actually, actually, they saw a touch on that, so the ball back to Wisconsin. Initially looked like that was an air, but it was a service air now from McDonald, but the touch before. So Nebraska, their first point here in the fourth. Gillis now with 10 kills, 17 digs, a double-double for her. Outstanding night. Think back to her match at Minnesota. She had 20 kills in that one, but she has been playing so well in the last five matches. Carlini with the tip over, and she has the point. You, you just really got to respect Carlini as an attacker. She's strong. She knows the, the defense where the opponents are across and is able to find those open areas. Fourth kill for her tonight. Fecky the power and Maury can't dig it up. Talk about strong right there. You got a strong swing from Fecky on the outside, trying to get her offense uh, going, trying to get her team to play at that high level that they know they're capable of. Moments like this, if you're Nebraska, you think back to being down 2-0 against Penn State on the road. Fecky was a big part of the reason why Nebraska came back to win that match at five. So Huskers have the opportunity. You just need to force a decisive fifth set. Bates, though, continues her exceptional play. 
I would say she has just turned it up to the next level since set number one. She's become aggressive, she's confident, she's making strong moves, and, and really in all facets. There we see the block, we've seen an attack, but also her ball handling in the back row. 12 kills for Bates, nine digs, three blocks, and then the kill for Amber Rolson. Nebraska trying to diversify using that middle quick attack with Amber Rolson gets up that quick timing. Amber Rolfson, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week last week. Getting it done with her attack here in the fourth. Nelson behind Carlini. Second chance for her. Save from Longarantis. And Fecky off the hands. And great push there by Kelly Hunter to push that ball to the outside, get it up there in a the place that she could let Fecky go after it. First lead for Nebraska since it was 1-0 in set two. Bates trying to even it up though quickly. Carlini and Longarantis, a couple of digs for her. Maury with the up. Great defense on both sides. Fecky cross court ends the rally. Big three kills here for Fecky in this series across the front. But we're seeing great defensive ups by both sides. We've got two outstanding liberos. We've got a lot of great defensive play. Justine Wong Arantes, 24 digs in this match. Taylor Morey has just eight, but she's had some great ups. Hunter hanging <laughs> off the stanchion trying to get that ball. Pursuing at all costs, trying to keep that alive. And that's what you want. You want your team to never quit, never die on a ball. Carlini serving for the Badgers. Punched back up by Mori. And Fecky with the air just long. Fecky just couldn't get an approach. Need to take a little bit off there. She's been hot, swinging hard. Just need to make an adjustment there. Coach Cook has talked about how Fecky is so good about keeping some of the bad balls in that time, though. Couldn't do it as she was maybe a bit too aggressive trying to get that kill. Short serve from Carlene. Oscar's out of system, but Fecky, Mori the up. Albright out of the back row, and it looks like her foot was past the 10 foot line. Seems pretty clear on that one, so that'll go against Nebraska. Yep, you can take off behind um, and land in front, but if you step on or cross that, yep, very good call by the official. And the side out from Amber Rolfson. Great Made swing it. there. Just ran that right off the back of Hunter. Quick tempo between the block. Eight kills now for Amber Rolfson. Once again, Fecky back to serve. Keep on waiting, keep on talking about whether or not she's going to go on that run because she was so impressive last weekend. Nelson, though, doesn't allow her to with the quick kill. Nope. Nelson up there quick, all right there, right in front. She's got blockers in front of her. Does a great job working off the hands of the blockers. A lot of times those quick ones you just hit straight ahead. Just a delay to clean up the court, just wipe it down. And as we talk, though, about Haley Nelson, one of the big differences for her as a freshman, she wasn't really ready to compete at this level. A sophomore had bright spots, but now, according to Coach Sheffield, she takes over matches and can be the go-to player at times for Wisconsin. She almost had another yep. block. <laughs> Gillis off the long set from Carlini. Dean back into the match for the Huskers. Fishkova the off speed. Maloney dives for that ball, and the Huskers win the rally. Defense.
defense wins matches. We saw some great defensive plays. We're seeing it on both sides, but it just gives your team an opportunity to keep having one more swing at the ball, keep the opponent under pressure. Kenzie Maloney coming off nine digs last night. She's got three, but a big one in that last rally. And Carlini, the dump. Great get, though, by the Huskers. However, the point ends with a Wisconsin tally. But Carlini making things happen, you know, whether it's a, it was a great dump and a, um, and a great up, but it set her blockers up to be in a position to, to sit there and be waiting for the attack. 13 blocks now for Wisconsin. Pancake from Bates. And then Hunter has her own attack for the point. Hunter getting in on the action there, being aggressive herself up at the net. Ball in a good position. You can see the blockers leaning. She read that and took advantage. Hunter actually leads Big Ten setters in kills this season. 73 for her. Making herself more of a weapon up there. Gillis. Second chance off the block. You saw Katie Rolfson there, but she wasn't. She was squared up facing the outside looking, and that's why that ball ricocheted right back out of bounds. Got to push to the middle, get those shoulders turned in. We are seeing tonight why Lauren Gillis was ranked as the number seven recruit in the country over a year ago. She's playing up to the expectations Wisconsin had for it. And there, the Wisconsin block coming through once more. And Nebraska being tentative here. Kelsey Fien coming in. Gets in there and is not quite to the ball. And um, trying to make a play out of it, it looked like. It's a season high, 14 blocks for Wisconsin. Fiend this time splits the block. Got her a better ball and she was able to drive it through. But as you said, the block is, is really playing a significant role here for Wisconsin. Interesting that Nebraska with just their five blocks, mm. not up to their normal numbers. Yeah, they've been averaging just under 3%. Good first contact for Wisconsin, so free ball opportunity for the Huskers. Out to Fecky, terminates. You want something done, push it out to the outside. Fecky is playing strong right now. That's her 14th kill in the match. And she's been a difference maker at critical points, as you talked about the Penn State match. Um, when Nebraska was down 2-0, Fecky was the difference maker, ended up with 22 kills in that match. Gillis into the net. It's interesting, though, we talk about the emergence of Michaela Fenke. Coming into the season, John Cook talked about how this team was going to be a middle, right side oriented <laughs> team. And then when they move Fecky from the right to the left, they really find a lot of effort from her. Absolutely. They found that um, we can be a left side oriented team <laughs> as well. Well, the left side has paid off for Wisconsin. Gillis coming through once more. Bates and Gillis combining right. now for 25 kills. And as you said, their left sides are really getting it done. I mean, they're the difference makers out there. They're leading. But then when you diversify, um, sprinkling the, in those middles, getting in on the action, increases everybody's efficiency. What a great take by Taylor Morey and Bates off the block of the Huskers. Bates, a lot of energy out on the court, talking to her teams, really rallying them, pushing them. Look how, how high her hits are, how high she gets up and elevates. Katie Rolfson trying to tip off the block. Williams this way. Set from Cecilia Hall out to Fecky. Williams, another chance. There's the block, though, for Fecky. Fecky gets back into that base position quickly. Those hands are up, pushing that in. Really impressive when you look at the stat sheet right now. Again, we talked about it before, but the distribution for both teams. Mm -hmm. Nebraska, five different players with six kills or more. Wisconsin with five different players with five kills or more. Both of these teams really showing the ability of their setters and how many great attackers they have. Block for the Huskers. They haven't had a ton, but coming through when they needed one. Two right here in a row. Focusing on Williams, slowing things down a little bit, trying to get some energy going. Great job there, really, by Amber Rolson, not quitting on that ball and working to the outside. 
The Big Ten leader in blocks with a big one right there. 13 to 12 lead for Nebraska in the fourth. Short serve. Bates tooling the block. She has been on fire tonight. She has been on fire and explosive, and I think that's what's made a difference. She's gone in there and, and, and has good vision. She's getting in there quick, sees what she's got in front of her, and they've been able to really let it develop. Seventh double-double of the season for Bates. Gillis with the dig. Carlini back out to Bates. And she was looking for a touch, but she missed. One of very few errors, though, for Bates. As you said, she's been on a run here. She's had 45, 40, excuse me, 46 attempts tonight on that outside. Only five errors. Coach Sheffield has such high hopes for her. He feels like she can be one of the best, best six rotation players in the nation by the time her career is done. Here she comes inside a bit on that set. Long Arantis, the up. Another chance. There's the block, Kelly Hunter for Nebraska. Nebraska's block making an impact here a little bit. We've been talking about Wisconsin's block, but in this last few series, it's Nebraska's block. Huskers up here in the fourth by two. Set four between Nebraska and Wisconsin. The Huskers have a 15 to 13 lead in the fourth in a must win situation here in the fourth. Mike Wolf alongside Kathy Wieskamp. And Kathy, we have seen the blocks for Wisconsin really dominate this match, but Nebraska has come alive blocking here in the last few points. Really in this last couple series across the front, the block has made a difference for Nebraska. They've been inconsistent throughout the match, but it really has made a difference here late in set number four. We'll see if Nebraska can keep it going and force a decisive fifth set. Nebraska trying to avoid dropping back-to-back -back conference home matches for the first time since 2003. Tough serve results in a free ball. Hunter with the swing, and she does get a touch. And as you mentioned, the swings from Hunter this season, she's been very aggressive because in these situations they're out of system. They'll set right to her and intentionally give her the ball. Fourth kill for Hunter. She's got a double-double with 46 assists and 10 digs. Wilson on the slide. Grass has gotten a lot better throughout this match in defending the slide. Bump set. Rolfson out of play. Just past the line, and the Husker fans wanted that call. Let's see if maybe John Cook whether he can pull out that card yep, and go for the replay, but we'll check on the replay ourselves. Oh, looks like it may have been just out. One of those where you have no, three challenges, not. haven't used one yet. Why not give it a shot? Yes, John Cook was confident, but Fecky with another error, and it's a one point four set. You know. The errors back and forth, that inconsistency, it's coming back to we're seeing Nebraska start to make a move moving forward. And then a really poor first contact. That's an ace for Wisconsin. However, it really should just be a, a receiving error by yep. Nebraska. Yep. And a timeout called by John Cook, tied up at 16, just when it looked like Nebraska had the momentum and they'd be on their way to potentially a fifth set. Wisconsin taking advantage of the airs by the Huskers. Kelly Sheffield mic'd up for us tonight in the huddle on the last time out. I like how we're ball controlling right now. I like how we're doing that. They're waking up a little bit. Good. Finally. Good. All right. All right. Now, now we get a box. All right. Let's go. Here we go. Sounds like Wisconsin wants a fight in this one. I love it. Um, and again, Coach Sheffield says it's going to bring the best out of us. And uh, we want them to be, be playing their best, and that makes us play our best, and let's go after it. And they come out after the last time out, and Nebraska three airs right in a row. So really the momentum on their side, the organization right now. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how Nebraska responds. 
because we talked about the inconsistency here, but again, back to those moments where you can decide a match, decide a set, who's going to come through. Both of these teams have struggled in those areas, so something has to give in this match. Right, somebody's going to have to step up and be the one who does push and finishes it. Right now, Coach Sheffield feels very confident. He says, you're playing great. He, he talked about what his team was doing. That's how he started that timeout. We're doing good things. And they're waking up. That's good because we're doing good things. So building that confidence in his team. And the Devaney Center trying to wake up as well. Get it loud in here as the fans rise to their feet. Lauren Carlini still serving for Wisconsin. Rolfson, Carlini the up. Fecky off the block. And you can just see when Fecky goes in after that ball, she is ready she, to bury that ball. She's going to make you beat her because she's intending to beat you. <laughs> we have talked all night about her not seeming like a freshman. Well, in a big moment, mm -hmm. she is not phased at all. Krishkova through the blocking down. Krishkova has just made big plays when that ball's been given to her. She's not had tons of swings today. Um, 22, uh, you know, right in the middle kind of the road there. But she's she's delivered. And serving for the Badgers. And another stuff for Wisconsin. Fiend right into the block. And you can really see the energy building on the Wisconsin side. Krishkova combining with Haley Nelson and Ostrander coming back in for Nebraska. Amber Rolfson, and she does get a touch before it went out of play. Nebraska siding out. Sydney Townsend come in, see if they can get a little bit of a run here. But Wisconsin really has not let up on the pressure, and they've handled the serve a little bit better here as they've got later in the match. Give some credit to Kelly Bates. She's done well in serve receive. Is again, Nebraska going after her. Gillis off the block, and Nebraska can't get there on the coverage. They can't get there. Just a tempo change there. She takes a little bit off the block, uh, off the ball, and the blockers can't control it. 18 Wisconsin. Badgers six points away. Bates with another dig. Gillis tooling. Wisconsin on a 7 to 2 run. And as we talked, who's going to push here at the end? Neither of these teams have really done that throughout this season consistently. Right now, Wisconsin is pushing hard. Hunter on the dump has the point. Hunter taking charge there at the setting position, throwing that ball to the floor quick. Trying to slow down this Wisconsin squad. Now we will see what she can do serving for the Huskers. Mori with the pass up to Carlini. Kushkova, it goes off two Huskers and falls. Just caroms off between the two blockers. And lands in the open court. Wisconsin 5-4 and four in Big Ten play. We mentioned how they've struggled on the road against some top ten competition. What a win it would be for them if they could close this out. On the Nebraska home court. Boy, they have never won. A chance for Rawson. Williams puts it away. Williams just quick around that backside, and you, you just got to love the control and Car Carlini has, and she just gives it, her hitters a hit of a ball. 22-19 Wisconsin, and a timeout for Nebraska. So Wisconsin, three points away from the victory. Lauren Carlini, she is our Coyote Logistics No Excuses Impact Player of the Match.
And the numbers don't tell the full story for Carlini with her 48 assists, eight digs, five blocks. The team is hitting 253. And then you see the five different players who have five kills or more in this match. It's her distribution and, and I would say her leadership out on the court. She runs this team and she does it with such poise. Um, and she's calm at all times. That's got to be great for the youth around her, and she really makes them play at the next level. I love the quote from Kelly Sheffield. She is flat out the hardest worker he has ever been around. She is always studying film, always in the gym, anything she can do to get better. And as we talked about before the broadcast, Kathy, she's got that Olympic flag yep. over yep. her bed. Those are the dreams and the goals for Lauren Carlini. But right now, she just wants a win for her Wisconsin team. That's exactly right. She's just so driven. And as you said, she's going to take them one at a time, knowing that this is one step closer to that ultimate goal. She tries to pump up her teammates to finish off this fourth set. Lauren Carlini leading this Wisconsin team. And Badgers with four losses kind of seem like they might be out of the Big Ten title race. The reigning Big Ten champions, if they keep on knocking off top ten opponents when they get chances. <laughs> they might have an opportunity to move up, and Nebraska has not lost back-to-back -back conference home matches since 2003. And that is also impressive that you consider they have not lost those since they've been in the Big Ten since 2011. Ostrander with a huge point. Huge point out of that timeout, um, bringing Ostrander in, making that quick side out. Annika Albright is in. She's been the only player for Nebraska has been able to make any runs. We'll see what happens here. They need one now if they want to push this to the fifth set. Maury, though, with a good pass. Tiana Williams down the line, the side out. That young freshman playing like a veteran. We talk about Fecky, but here's another freshman that is very confident, strong out there on the court. Nine kills for Tiana Williams. Madison Duello in a huge moment serving for Wisconsin. Fecky, what an up there by Maury. Mm -hmm. Out of the back row, Duello into the net. And again, we talk about freshmen at this moment. <laughs> yeah, but this is an intense moment being in that position. The embrace and the ability to handle that pressure. And it's not just that she's a freshman. She hasn't played a ton this year <laughs> right. in Madison Duello. Right. So not had opportunities to be on the court, to be in this situation. Sometimes that's good. Ignorance sometimes <laughs> can help you. 23-21, Nebraska with Justine Wong Arantes, their star libero serving. And an ace! The Huskers had to have it, they're back within one. Wisconsin wants to talk it over, and as you said, Annika Albright has been the only one from the service line for Nebraska until <laughs> Justine Wong Arantes gets that ace. And Wong Arantz is really again going right at Bates, who's been so strong uh, in this match tonight. She goes right after her. Last night, Nebraska fell in four sets to Minnesota, and they couldn't complete the comeback in that four set. They actually led that four set 25-24, and Minnesota rattled off three consecutive points. So Nebraska has to get it done if they want to here be critical and come through for their team. And again, what did you learn from last night's match? Because like you said, they were up. They were one swing away, you know, from winning, pushing that to a fifth set. How are you going to respond tonight? That's the key. Is it, are we going to see something different or will, be the, or will it be the same? And Coach Cook said he wanted to see that himself. He was anxious, wanting to see how his team would respond and how they would learn from last night. They need to complete this comeback in the fourth, but Wisconsin Still in a great spot. You know out of the timeout, Kelly Sheffield is going to be ready for the next serve from Justin Wong Arantes. Have his team in a good place to get a kill and potentially a match point. And the pressure's not on Wisconsin right now. I mean, they can play very free and comfortable. And as you talked to bringing um, Duello in, they really didn't have the pressure. Yes, she might have. But again, sometimes you go in there and say, I'm going to make a difference. And I think he's hoping that would happen. Justine Wong Arantes get another ace. 
Boy, would back-to-back -back aces be huge right here. Last time she went after Kelly Bates. Into the net, service air, match point, Wisconsin. That is the that, risk when you go yep, for it. Absolutely. You got to be aggressive, but that you're right. You got to also maintain that consistency. Taylor Morey serving for match point for the Badgers. <laughs> Donald diving to get to that ball. Bates ends it, and Wisconsin has their first ever win in program history in Lincoln. <laughs> Just a very complete game for the Badgers tonight. You talked about pushing to that end, but they played well all facets of the game. Wisconsin, a four-set victory over Nebraska.